Have you been curious about the Vermont Compost Company Fort V Soil? If so, follow us along in the Snow Before You Grow series as we evaluate it. Let's dive into our evaluation looking at price point first. Now we always evaluate these on price per cubic foot of soil. And this one came in at $56.84 per cubic foot price that I paid. And so at that price point, above $45 per cubic foot on our chart, actually is gonna score this one as a zero. But there could be a lot more value added as we look at look and feel, nutrient density, et cetera. So let's go ahead, open that bag up and see what smells we're getting. Yeah, so when I open this one, um, yeah, if I remember right, this is a, yeah, just a very pleasant, neutral smell. Just super nice. Just a really nice, one of the best ones I've actually smelled. Yeah, it reminds me of the smell you get kind of a soil right after a rain. It's really, really earthy and pleasant. Um, so Chris, what did you end up scoring this one? Uh, for smell, I actually gave this a nine, one of the best smelling yeah. soils to date. That... I, I'm 100% in line with you. This is one of the better smelling ones to date and I have it at a nine also. So we've got it scored at a zero for price, but let's go ahead and put a nine in our scorecard for smell. Let's lay some of this out and get a sense of the, uh, the look and feel of this soil um, next. I find it to be, you know, really fine, but when I make a ball of it in my hand, it holds together almost like a natural soil. There's obviously quite a bit of peat moss in there. The coarse woody bits that you get are kind of minima or minimal. Um, they're, they're relatively small. I'm not getting any slivers. Uh, I really like the, the look and feel of this soil. There is something unique maybe you could point out though, Chris. Yeah, we see these, um, fairly large um, golden golden silver flakes in this soil um, i don't know that it tells us exactly what these are on the bag um, whether it's mica you know a vermiculite or something but very interesting the amount of these these flakes in this soil but overall yeah good texture good feel just a, a nice nice feeling soil Great. Yeah, I, I would just add that those gold flakes um, over the course of the six and a half week grow out kind of dissolved or dissipated, weren't noticeable anyway at the soil surface. Um, and when you put them between your fingers, um, you can actually rub them off a little bit. It's not tin foil, um, which uh, we've seen some, uh, some comments on that before. Definitely not tin foil though. So interesting look and feel. I had it scored at an eight and a half um, and I was I was closer to a nine, but came down to an eight and a half just because of some unknowns. So look and feel eight and a half. Let's go ahead and talk nutrient levels then, Chris. All right. So for nutrient levels, uh, we, we sampled this soil prior to growing out the plants. We evaluated those nutrient levels on this one. Uh, it scored pretty well. Uh, we did have good levels of all our macronutrients. Nitrogen though was really right on the, the bottom end of the optimal mm -hmm. range. So just kind of right on the bubble. Uh, we were low in micronutrients, which is very common across all of our soils that we've evaluated to date. pH was right at the lower end of the optimal range, but optimal for, for soil pH. So overall pretty good nutrient levels on this one. Uh, with nitrogen being right on the bubble there, but I scored it as an eight for nutrient levels overall. Yeah, and Chris and I talked ahead of Philman and I was 100% in alignment with him. I was at an eight also. The nutrient density score uh, through the MySoil platform was at an 85%, but with that nitrogen being at 35 parts per million, right at the bottom end of that uh, sufficiency range, um, I, I did drop it down to an eight as well. So should we get that plugged into the scorecard? Yeah, let's go with an eight. Perfect. Now with those nutrient levels and this soil, <clears throat> keeping it moist throughout the last six and a half weeks, how did it grow? Well, I'll tell you, if we would have looked at this uh, seven or eight days ago, you wouldn't have seen nearly as much, if any, of this uh, yellowing. It was really around week four or five where we started to, I think, run out of nitrogen. And that's what this yellowing is. That nitrogen's moving up into other parts of the plant. So certainly we'll grow. Um, for these hungry plants like tomatoes, we saw the nitrogen running a little low. But as we look at that lettuce, man, it's doing great. Um, so for these leafy yeah. greens, I thought, uh, I thought we had really good, really good success here. Yeah, I agree. It definitely will, will grow plants, uh, both our leafy greens and, uh, and our tomatoes. Um, yeah, the lettuce looks, you know, really, really good. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I think overall, um, no issues with, with growing plants. Like Matt said, uh, they just ran out here of that nitrogen being on that lower end of the range. Um, you know, in the last week or so, we started really seeing these deficiencies. So. Yep. Yeah, so I'm at a seven and I did, didn't mention, but we did see just a slight amount of tip burn on some of the lettuce leaves. So with that other observation, I was at, uh, at a seven. I was at a seven as well on this one. Perfect. Now, if we plug seven in there, that's going to give us an overall rating of this soil of a 6.5. So definitely a decent performer. Um, if you were going to get a bag of this and use it, Chris, how would you put it to use? Yeah, on my notes here, I, I noted it as a kind of a good all around soil or standalone with maybe some additional um, nitrogen added to it, especially you know, mid season in a raised bed garden, adding a little more um, nitrogen to the to this blend uh, would uh, perform very well. So I had it as that because of the price. I don't think it's a great amendment to a native soil garden for the price, you know, just to get more organic matter uh, into the soil. So I would say just a standalone um, maybe seed start as well mm -hmm. um, based on the texture. So standalone seed start knowing we may need some nutrient additions to it in the future. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think this is uh, great for everything Chris discussed, just knowing that you're probably going to need some mid-season nitrogen applications, especially for those um, higher nitrogen use plants. Well, thanks for following us along in this Know Before You Grow series as we looked at the Vermont Compost Company Fort V soil. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification so you don't miss any of our other Know Before You Grow uploads. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon in the lab.